Hello my friends, it's me, Canadian Turtle, and in today's video I'm going to be talking about one of my most anticipated games of 2011. Actually, no, scratch that. It's actually my most anticipated game of all time. There's so many things I have to say about this game, and uh, I don't think I've ever been this obsessed over a sequel release in my life. Ever since I played both Resistance 1 and 2, I've been obsessively waiting t about two and a half years for Resistance 3 to come out. I remember when the first ever Resistance 3 trailer came out on the internet, I, I went crazy after seeing it. I remember my full reaction. It was the happiest moment of my life as a gamer. I, it was around the summer vacation a few years back. Um, I, I woke up, I had nothing to do that day. I brushed my teeth, I go eat breakfast. I was expecting just another day of summer. I was dead wrong. So I go on my computer and I go to my YouTube subscription box and I see a video called Resistance 3 Teaser Trailer. And I just freaking clicked on the video like some sort of rabid animal. And after watching it, I just screamed for joy. Like, I literally ran to my living room and jumped for joy. Screamed my lungs out. Yeah! And that's just some background story of my hype behind the game. And before I say anything more, I'm just going to go out and say that this video is a fan review of the game. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the game from a Resistance fan point of view. And there will be lots of spoilers in this video, and I'm, I only recommend this video for people who have beat the game. Unless you don't really care about spoilers, then feel free to watch it. But this video is made for discussion about the game. Anyways, let me tell you right off the bat, I love Resistance 3 to death. Resistance 3 took all the good things that made Resistance 1 and 2 so awesome and put them into the game. The weapon wheel is back and so is the health packs. The reason I love the weapon wheel so much is because it lets you play the game the way you want to. The, the weapons in the Resistance franchise are just amazingly creative and so much fun to shoot with. It would be total torture if they only let you carry two weapons at once, which is why in Resistance 3 you get the weapon wheel which lets you carry all 16 weapons at once and lets you switch from them any time during battles so that you can have some creative kills. You can, you can have a bunch of Grims running at you and there, there's going to be so many fantastic ways to getting through them. Like you, you can take out your atomized, your secondary fire and take them out with your shotgun and blast them away as you're becoming atomized. And while you're doing that, why not put a couple of turrets behind you with your marksman's secondary so that those turrets will have your back so you don't get jumped from behind. There's so many different strategies you can play with through the game. And that it, It's all thanks to the amazing selection of creative weapons and the weapon wheel. And that also adds a lot of replay value for me too because I know that there's so many different ways to get, it, get through my enemies that every playthrough will be a different experience. Also, the health packs add another dynamic gameplay element as well, and because it has that feeling of survival, like it, and wanting to stay alive and not wanting to get hit. And with that, I guess the game kind of encourages you to think before you act. In this game, you'll think, like, you'll be more cautious about your health, and you'll think twice before charging into a group of random enemies without a game plan. Therefore, I'm really happy that Resistance 3 went back to the original uh, old-school first-person shooter gameplay that Resi Resistance Fall of Man had with the weapon wheel and health packs. Like, as much as I love the second Resistance game, it's an outstanding game and I loved it for what it was, and I'm not here to bash it or anything, but imagine how much more addictive Resistance 2 could have been if only it had the uh, health packs and weapon wheel. Just take a moment and imagine playing through a level of Resistance 2 with, with the weapon wheel. I, I think the game could have been so much more dynamic and 100% better if only it had them. And what made Resistance 3 such a fun game is that it had a lot of things added to it that made the game fun. It wasn't about being a game that was realistic. No, it was about being a game that was really fun to play. I mean, sure, carrying 16 weapons at once isn't realistic at all, but like we were too busy having fun with the weapon wheel gameplay that, and we enjoyed the feeling of survival that the health packs gave us that we didn't even give a about the realism like we kind of just went along with it like we were so attracted to this beautifully crafted atmospheric world and we thought the gameplay was really fitting for what it was we felt as if the game works better this way as opposed to having health regeneration and only two weapon slots like most other shooters now the weapons in this game are just fantastic. I also love the fact that the weapons level up and get stronger the more you use them. And I think that was such an innovative idea for the series. And the weapons do more than just extra damage when they level up. You know, they 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 all they actually look different too, so it gives more eye candy. And the old favorites are back, like the auger, bullseye, carbine, magnum, and it feels so intense using all the guns because they, they make these very loud and explosively powerful sounds when you shoot with them. No, and all the Chimeran guns make all these high-tech laser sounds when you shoot with them. And I just love the feeling of the bullseye and the and the auger in this game. It really feels like you're holding a powerful extraterrestrial weapon. And one thing I really love about the bullseye is that when you shoot the secondary tag, it makes this red laser string that all the bullets follow it. And it looks really awesome in this game. They didn't do that in the previous games. And I love how each weapon like works so differently. And they're also diversified from one another that it adds so much more variety to the first person shooter gameplay and there's so many creative ways that you can combine the use of your weapons to the best of your advantage 
My favorite new weapons are the cryo gun and the atomizer. I remember the first time seeing the cryo gun in action, I saw the gun freeze up the, a grim like into frozen ice, and the way it looked, it, uh, I just thought it was mind blowing. Seeing the grims like run towards you, and then seeing it slow down and turn into like bare ice was like beautiful and the fact that you can use a secondary for that weapon and then break them into like pieces like makes it even more addictive to use the atomizer is awesome as well i love seeing my enemies become atomized and electrocuted from existence it looks very nice and it feels good to know that my enemies are being tortured into a very excruciatingly painful death not to mention the secondary fire for the atomizer becomes very useful during many parts of the game and it's cool how it, you know it works like a magnet and it, be and it just atomizes any chimera that comes near it very cool guns like these are the reason why I love the Resistance series, you know, it's what makes the franchise so unique from other FPS games. I love the weapon so much that I never used the sledgehammer during my Resistance 3 playthroughs. Well, except for the prison sequence where you're kind of forced to use a sledgehammer, but other than that, I always use the guns. Like, you see many people these days saying how the market is oversaturated with FPS games these days, and like, they, they all play the same. Well, if you know any of these people, then let them try out Resistance 3, because this game breaks those boundaries. The gameplay mechanisms in this game and the overall setting universe, like, is what makes Resistance 3 such a unique shooter. Also. Like another thing I wanted to point out is that I love the fact that the game doesn't force you to aim down your sights all the time. Like you only have to aim down the sights when you really need to, and I like that because it makes it feel more like a classic first-person shooter. And that's how I like to describe the Resist Resistance series, a, mo a modern classic first-person shooter. Now let's talk about the overall presentation of the game. Let me tell you that the single-player campaign for this game is epic from start to finish. As you all know, I love the Resistance games mostly because of their single player and co-op experiences and this game delivers an outstanding single player campaign mode and co-op mode. One thing that stands out is that the atmosphere is back and better than ever. The feeling of being invaded by deadly alien forces back. I love the creepy atmosphere in this game and how everything is just torn apart and ripped to shreds by the brutal chimera. Everywhere you go, like there's destruction and traces of spires, leapers, and even chimeran plant life like the blast roots. Every level in the game shows the devastating impact that the chimera have done to the earth and uh, I have never seen such beautiful destruction in my life. In most of the levels you can see like chimeran plant life all over, the, all over the place and it looks, it really looked as if the earth itself was dying as much as the human species. Like it made me wonder if the earth was ever going to get back on its foot ever again now that it's not pure anymore. Like the graphics in this game have set such a unique tone because of the beautifully colored art style and it fits really well with the 1950s era. I honestly don't think we'll ever see a better looking alien invaded 1950s America in any other game. My favorite level is the evacuation level from the beginning of the game. I thought that it was such an intense experience to be part of an incoming terraformer and seeing the wind and gusts just wreak havoc on everything and fighting the chimera at the same time made it even more epic. Like uh, I also have to mention the epic snowy levels in this game. Like the snow effects look really beautiful in this game and it looks really nice and it actually made me feel like I was in the middle of a real snowstorm. I also adore the chimera. I've said this many times and I'll say it again. The Chimera are the best enemies I've ever seen in any video game. I love their creepy alien-like designs and their aggressive nature. I also really love how their technology looks. Like the weapon designs and the spacecraft technology looks very unique and has this unique lore to it. You know, they, they really are the perfect killing machines. This time we get to see Feral and Military Chimera. It's interesting to see what would happen if some of the Chimera were free of their hive mind. And I guess the Feral ones made Earth their new habitat now. One of my favorite chimera in this game are the long legs. I find their design philosophy to be very unique and they kind of remind me of the slip skulls from Resistance Fall of Man. I find it intriguing that their legs are made from the same formation as grasshoppers so that they can jump hundreds of feet into the air. I also really like the brawler. You know, again, we, we are seeing the chimera have really won the war against the humans. They're running out of humans to turn into chimera so they're, they've turned to making earth-like animals like gorillas uh, into their own kind. Also, the Widowmakers are back. I, I love them especially in this game because the way they move around and stuff like it makes them look so real and lifelike and it's really fun to kill them. Some of my favorite moments in this game were the epic Widowmaker battles like particularly particularly the battle in New York City where it's pretty much an all-out war between the Feral Chimera, Military Chimera and uh, Joseph Capelli. Like this section of the game was just heart-poundingly intense. One of my other favorite moments of the game was during the train sequence where you get to see hundreds upon hundreds of Widowmakers stampeding across the land. 
That part made my jaw drop to the floor. Another one of my jaw dropping moments uh, is during the New York level at the beginning. I remember looking up at the sky and I see this massive wormhole linking our world to the Chimera's world. And it was epic because I really felt the scale of that thing and it, it was actually kind of scary to look at it. And I, I also noticed that in the wormhole you can see the Chimera's dying world and that explains why they're moving to Earth. The story was also really interesting too, that not once was I ever bored during the playthrough. Like every time, like everything in the campaign was paced so perfectly and there was never a dull moment. This time the story is shown from a normal human's perspective. Sure the military is cool and stuff, but it's a good change to see how normal everyday citizens are dealing with this horrific alien invasion. The game touched on many things on how would like... The, how would the humans react to the invasion? You know, they would live underground for safety, they would evacuate when danger came close, and it also touched on other things like cannibalism, and where humans are running out of animals to eat, so they have to eat their own kind now. And to be honest, I actually really liked Joseph Capelli in this game. He was a really strong and dedicated family man, I, and he would put his life on the line for his family's survival. Unlike Joseph Capelli in Resistance 2, in Resistance 3, he actually has, get this, emotions. <gasps> That's incredible. I also thought that Malkov was a more likable character in this game too. It was really depressing to see him die though because like, sure he's done some terrible things in the past considering the Chimera invasion, but he was willing to put his life on the line to save humanity and make up for his mistakes. Another addition I really liked is that Resistance 3 has brought back the radio messages and the written journals. I love reading through these. So basically, I love Resistance 3 to death. I, it was so much fun to play through the game on single player and co-op, and sure it's not the awesome 8 player co-op that Resistance 2 had, but still a lot of fun, and especially when it comes to killing hordes of Grimms with a friend on co-op, like, I got this game for my birthday, and believe me, it's one gift that I'll never forget. I beat the game three times, including Superhuman mode, and I still wasn't bored of the game. I went on playing through the campaign and co-op with a lot of other people, and Resistance 3 is my game of the year for 2011 because I got my money's worth and I got what I've been waiting two and a half years for, an epic sequel to my favorite gaming series of all time. And uh, I want to personally thank Insomniac Games for creating the Resistance franchise. They've done such an amazing job with this game and especially because they really listen to their fans this time. Insomniac Games, let me tell you this, no matter what any of the critics say, I want to tell you guys that you've done an outstanding job with, Re with Resistance 3 and the overall Resistance series and no other game series will ever fill its shoes. Thank you all for watching. This video was made for all the Resistance 3 players out there. Tell me your impressions of the game and what you think overall. Also, let me know what you think of the future of the Resistance series, and I'll see you next time.